Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this week's episode, there's nothing miniature about these guys. These are the Renegade Imperial Knights. So when I first got these to build for a friend, I was like, oh, I don't like epic scale, I'm not a huge fan of that. And then I realized these aren't epic scale. These are scaled to 40k. These can be used right alongside all of your normal 40k miniatures in your battles. And it's also a standalone game, which is so cool that it has this sort of, you know, giant mech versus giant mech kind of vibe going on. Is this going to be like something like Battletech? Is this going to be more akin to that than 40k? And what's the build going to be like? Are there going to be a dizzying number of build options that leave me sort of with analysis paralysis? There's only one way to find out, and that's to get this thing opened and have some fun. So it takes a lot to intimidate me with a Warhammer kit. This, though, this is... These are huge things. we got Renegade across the top. we got Giant War Machines Duel in the 41st Millennium. This, this box is like three inches deep you know it's it's a lot to take in i have no idea how i'm going to build these either i'm just going to go by the rule of cool and see what i like when i go through the manual um like a great sort of scene here between the, the two i was going to say miniatures but creations um some cool scenery i'm sure i built that piece of scenery at some point and yeah, we got two knights, Imperial Knights Renegade rulebook. We got a transfer sheet for the Renegade Knight, transfer sheet for the Imperial Knight. One Sector Mechanicus Galvanic Magnavent. Oh, right, okay, so that comes with it. Oh, that's kind of neat. Uh, reference cards and dice. So, and it also includes the rules necessary to field knights in your games of Warhammer 40,000. Let's get into this. Let's have a look. Okay, we've got a rule book and a poly bag here with look like instructions. I'll get that opened in a second. Lovely piece of artwork to protect the uh, rule book from the spiky sprues underneath, but I appreciate that. Uh, cool logo there as well. Yeah, nice. Alrighty. Lots of sprues. Lots and lots of sprues. Well, let's open this up first. Rule book. Oh, these are huge. I was, when I saw these in the back of the box, I thought they were tiny, but they're absolutely huge. Ah, right, okay. So, um, we've got all of the different areas where you can take damage on a card here. These are pretty hefty plastic, or cardboard. And that's kind of neat. It, it marks, I guess, where the, the damage occurs. You can see the critical damage table down below here, uh, across here, the, the weapon stats, uh, weapons profiles in the back. This is a really nice addition. And some beautiful art on these weapons to give you an idea of how to paint them too. Oh man, look at that Reaper chainsword. I mean, think of the shells. Shell casing this thing would eject. You would not want to be walking underneath that. You probably wouldn't be the one to drive your tank underneath that to do serious damage. All right. So we've got a little core rules leaflet and then the actual Renegade rule book. Here we have decals. I was promised decals. I have not seen them so far. Okay, maybe they're in there, or maybe they're underneath. Crusader, Warden, Gallant, Paladin, Errant. Uh, so five options here for the Imperial Knights. And then just following the steps for each one. And, and, and you'll see, like, I mean, it's full color here. You'll also see the glue points which is a lovely touch, um, really helps you when, when trying to follow it, and very clear designation of when not to glue. So to retain some movement in some part, it could be like a weapons part, or it could be, you know, a, a joint or something, like a limb. Um, 
And I was just going to say that you've got this nice clear indicator here of which steps to follow should you want to do one of these. And I've found that shoving a post-it, like here you've got 1 to 8 and then a jump to 14. At step 9, put a post-it over that page uh, with the number 14 or something on it. It's just a handy reminder. It stops you going down the wrong path. Uh, so in here, oh wait, there's the decal sheet. Oh no, I was fooled by a picture. <sighs> so embarrassed. Um, yeah, and you can see uh, just here very clear instruction. These things are monstrous. Oh, it's going to look so cool. Anyway, instructions all there. Let's have a quick look at the rule book for Renegade. Uh, A4, folding out into A3, and nicely printed. And so far, fairly basic looking, I would say basic looking art, but it's, it's not sort of blowing me away yet. I do like this little design up in this corner. Oh, that's pretty cool. Very rock and roll. Oh yeah, look at that. Um, artwork's okay so far. Uh, this is nice. This is the same image from the divider, isn't it? Yeah, and the cover art. Into the rules. Uh, into a bunch of different missions there. That's a very compact delivery of six different missions. That's nice. Get you up and used to using them and different objectives and how to deploy. And then we're into Quest for Imperialis, Quest for Mechanicus, Free Blades. So giving you really nice painting guides here. Uh, no color reference, but there probably was on the back. Yeah, so there's a color reference here for House Tyrannus. And I believe there are more in the Codex. Bear with me. No, so so there aren't um, painting guides within the Codex. I just so happen to have the Codex to hand. Uh, it does give you slightly bigger images, some um, close-ups of heraldry liveries, uh, and a whole bunch of different uh, houses and things, different color schemes that you can try. Uh, but it doesn't actually tell you what paints to use. It just gives that one example on the back of here. Um, as a starting point. I'm sure there are lots of painting guides available for these online, should you uh, go and ask. Uh, some really great Facebook groups as well, I'm sure would be able to help you, or Reddit, should you be looking for a palette. Uh, using Knights and Warhammer 40,000, so that's really nice to have that in there too. Uh, the data sheets, and here are the 40k data sheets at the back. So, very handy. And a really nice diorama there with these hulking machines facing off against each other. I'm hoping that wasn't an ambush because, you know, he's like right there. Just had to look left and you would have seen him. Anyway, here we go. So two Imperial Knights in this box and you will see these are probably going to be a lot of identical sprues. So these are definitely the same. Let's put that one up here and have a closer look at this. It's just the scale here. So normally with large casts like these, where you're normally looking at um, scenery. And scenery casts generally won't have the level of detail that a miniature would have. I mean, this these parts here are just tiny. But yeah, you, you would normally look at huge sprues like this with huge parts on them when you're looking at scenery kits and you'd be expecting it to be not quite as sharp as say if you bought like a pack of intercessors or um, a kill team or something like that. You expect those to be sharper off the sprue than something like scenery would be. But this is as big as a scenery sprue, but it has the sharpness of a miniature sprue. The rivet detail the louver detail there as well. The riveting detail. All of the very delicately sculpted parts 
and they've come through beautifully in these these casts so it's two of those let's see if we have any other duplicates okay this looks like a duplicate sprue yep it's the size of the weapons as well look at it and scale to my fingers let's have a look at it and scale to marine there you go just that one weapon component is the size of a fairly beefy looking Astartes. But these look fantastic. Look at the hosing running off that part. Is that a barrel of something? That's too cool. Oh, would you check out the Reaper Chainsword? That is glorious. Truly glorious. Oh, wow, the helmet as well. So you get scenery over this side. Let's see. So here's another duplicate sprue. Yep. Let's check out one of these. It's nice that there are sculpted details on this armor. It will make uh, painting them that bit easier. Even uh, if this is a single color and perhaps a, a secondary color over here. Then you can pick this out with like metallics or something. Very, very simple paint job, but because this is all sculpted detail and you're just sort of picking it out with, with metallics, it would look really dramatic for very little effort. Because the effort's been put into the sculpt and the cast. Ah, oh, look at big feet. Let's see what that looks like with a dreadnought. Let's compare shoe sizes here. So yeah, there's a dreadnought's tiny little feet compared to this titan and just some other components armor plate oh that banner hanging down there as well on the chains and the crossbar that's pretty cool okay have we just got scenery left or do we have one more part screw scenery scenery okay looks like a single one of these Very cool. And again, throughout here, a uh, beautiful casting of detail. Is this a ferrotonic incinerator? It's probably not. I can't remember. I built so much scenery at one point that it, it all kind of just blurred into uh, one. And, you know, I sort of was saying about the lack of detail in some of the, the scenery casts, but they're still pretty good. They are still pretty good. So, and this, I guess, would be the maintenance area for these nights where they, you know, beep, 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 back in and have uh, this sort of servitor system. And you can see all these units on chains. This, this would be sort of to maintain it and some of the wall supports that I absolutely hate. I mean, they're great. They're, they're incredibly functional. And these ladders... But because they have a, I said it before in one of the scenery videos that I did, there's a seam that runs all the way right through all those rivets inside and out. And the same here on these support struts just runs all the way around and you've just got to run your knife very carefully, section to section, a lot of cleanup. Um... I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would just be like, nope, life's too short. I'm not going to bother cleaning up uh, pieces of mold line in between rivets on a stair or on a, on a ladder. Uh, but I tend to do them. Oh, and we do have our decal sheet at the bottom. So I'm very happy to see that because uh, I've been excited to see what the, the designs are like on it because it looks spectacular. Um, and then we have these huge bases. They're absolute monsters of bases. I think they're 165 mil base, um, but very cool. Couple of dice, two different colors. Oh, cool. Second decal sheet there. Right, so this is a general Imperial Knights uh, transfer sheet. And then this is the specific one for the Renegades. So it is possible, I guess, that that single sprue over there was a Renegade one. A lot of the detail are white, so hopefully that's picking up on camera. 
Maybe you can read that? I can't. I know it's text, <laughs> but that's as, as close as I can get at this range. And a bunch more stuff there. And uh, copyright 2015 on that decal sheet and 2014 on this one. Okay, so maybe the Renegade came out a year later, I'm guessing by that. And all the different houses there. Okay, with, uh, let's just check what these dice are like. See if we need to replace these. Oh no, we'll keep both of those. We've got a six and a five, so they're both good to go. And uh, yeah, I'll be back in a few moments. Take care. Bye. So that was a much more enjoyable building experience than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be stressful. I thought it was going to be so many options that I would just be like, have analysis paralysis and just be looking at this weapon for the right side, this weapon for the left side, the, the type of face mask, the type of this, that, and the other. And it was actually made simple because I had the codex. I leafed through the codex and I found two knights that were just, that really jumped out at me, that that had the, the right sort of balance of weaponry and backstory and it just made it, it more, much more interesting to build as well because I start, was starting to think in my head of who these people were driving these huge machines. And yeah, so, and these are the two designs that I settled on. So when I was building this guy, for example, I, I wasn't thinking about, oh, it's going to have a chain sword and it's going to have, you know, this, um, what's this called? A Avenger Gatling cannon. I was thinking this is a Quester Mechanicus Knight for House Raven. And it's being piloted by Greven. And it's called Ferris Maximus. That's what I was thinking. I knew that this was a Knight Warden. That this was an Iron Storm Missile Pod. We got the Avenger Gatling Cannon. Uh, I think in this model it's the Thrice Blessed Gatling Cannon. Thrice Blessed by the Omnissiah. Because as you can see, this is a, a Mechanicus Knight. And over here we have the, the Fantastic Reaper Chainsword. It is just... Yeah, that, it just made the building experience so much richer. And let me just show you what it looks like in the Codex. So you can see the miniature here, miniature. And uh, then I put this in front and you can see it in the Codex. That's what it looks like. Absolutely fantastic. And you can build it, just custom build it right to that design, which is so cool. And then we have Balthazar, the Ever Stalwart for House Terran. And this is a uh, for Quest for Imperialis Knight. And this pilot is actually, or oh, this package of the pilot plus this knight is the King's Ward. So for, for House Terran, this is the, the King's... Um, Protector, I think, uh, bodyguard, something like that. This is a knight paladin layout. We've got the um, twin Icarus auto cannon, and for this particular knight, Balthazar the Ever Stalwart, this uh, twin auto cannon up here, uh, twin Icarus auto cannon, is nicknamed Sky Doom, and I think that's so cool. Uh, we've also got the rapid fire battle cannon, which is a pretty meaty looking bit of kit. And over here, we've got the Thunderstrike Gauntlet. Uh, I really like the way the, the hand went together here, but I'll have a look at more details uh, in a second. So yeah, I have the Questor Imperialis, Questor Mechanicus. There were some limitations to how you built these. You didn't get two of everything. So you, did, you couldn't have made these, like I couldn't have made two of this knight, for example. You know, exactly the same as this because there was a sprue that was shared between the two models. It, I think it was the A sprue. Everything else there was duplicates, but the A sprue there was only one of. And you had to dip into it to build certain weapons. So that was kind of interesting, but it didn't hold me back. I felt like I was able to build these exactly the way I wanted. I picked out two knights from the codex and it just, yeah. Oh, I forgot to show you an image of Balthazar. So Balthazar has the, um, Rapid Fire Battle Cannon and the Thunderstrike Gauntlet. You have an option, you could have made that with a, a Chainsword as well on this side, but I actually preferred the um, the Gauntlet. And you can see Balthazar here. 
So very, very cool. Balthazar the Ever Stalwart. Anyway, uh, let's have a quick look at some details here. And you can see how this has been put together. Uh, by not using any glue on the weapon, I've still got flexibility to position this whatever way I want, which is really cool if you're posing this for, for photos or whatever. And you'll see the, the Gatling cannon on this side as well. There's just so much movement there. It kind of feels like it's going to fall off at times, but it just hangs in there and you can position it any way you want. And I just love that. And there are sections where you just will find there's a little bit of movement. You can just see that the, the, the face guard moves up and down there a little bit. This uh, shield moves around. And I just think that is so special that, that it has that articulation built into it. Of course, if you want, you could glue all that in place. It's entirely your call. But I just like leaving it a little bit loose. I was building this for a friend. If they decide to glue it in a very specific pose, that's up to them. I want to leave them with those options. What I also wanted to leave them with is some flexibility in the torso. So as you can see here, I've left that completely flexible and I've been able to do that just by applying rotation magnets from greenstuffworld.com. You have this section here, which is the actual magnet with the, the dip inside it and then a nice shiny ball bearing over here. And it gives you this very confident sort of click together and gives you all of this flexibility and it's not going to drop out of there without a serious shake. But it just allowed for that additional posability. You could probably do something in the weapons arms or something here, but the way this thing is built, the way this thing has been designed, I didn't really feel it was necessary to add any more. So switching over to old uh, Balthazar here, you, see, you can see I've done exactly the same thing. Balthazar breaks apart. And again, you got that rotation magnet. I think that's the XL size, just in case you are looking for one. They have multiple sizes. Uh, and again, we've got this uh, flexibility on both weapons arms. And I just love this, the way this hand went together. These fingers go on in, uh, separately and the thumb goes on. And I kind of had it as a bit of a sort of a creepy point where you can have it as a little bit of this gesture here. There's like, what? Again, movement on the cannon here, movement on the shield. And with this particular one, uh, I knew there was a, a gap in the face mask. And I knew that would be tough to paint. So I just put a small magnet. It's, it's ugly now because this isn't primed, but it's irrelevant. This would get gray sprayed and you wouldn't notice any difference. So we've got a tiny magnet on this side, another tiny magnet over here, and that face mask just clicks back into place there. So you could take that off, paint in sort of gluing eyes or even add LEDs or something like that and pop the mask on when, when you're done. Um, other details like these sort of banners down here are just uh, glorious looking things. Loads of space in the pauldrons and everything for uh, decals or free paint, free handed painting. What a cool pair of uh, knights. And I love that they're so connected to the lore and you have your painting guide there within the codex. And there are probably hundreds of other examples of how to paint these up. You could go for a lot of corrosion, battle damage. Heck, you could have, you know, this guy's got the chainsword here and you could have this one cut in half on the battlefield beside him. You know, why not? But that wraps it up for Giant War Machines dueling in the 41st millennium. I will be back in the next episode with a Kickstarter unboxing from Red Grass Games. And I lost the run of myself in the Pledge Manager. So I don't even remember what's in that box, but it's a way bigger box than it should be. Uh, but that is in the next episode. If you like this video, please like, please share, please subscribe. Every time I see a new subscriber, it is just a, the coolest thing. And I love reading your comments and engaging with you there. You can also check out our Instagram page on Grey Primer Social, and I'll put a link into the show notes below. For now, though, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.